yeah good evening good evening everyone yeah the before understanding uh, today's concepts let's try to recollect it what we had it uh, yesterday that's we try to understand it and then we move it uh, yeah the we try to learn it uh, some more concepts about uh, yeah the tomcat server that's about deployment yeah the overall if you just try to understand the maven what are the main maven commands we are understanding is yes if you have the, the java source code if you would like to compile it so which we can use it uh, yeah from the life cycles that is about a clean default site from these uh, life cycles we can use the uh, phases but if you'd like to compile it what is the phases compile phase which is available from the default life cycle and if you'd like to clean up the previous output directories that is a clean the clean and compile clean is deleting the previous output directory and the compile is yeah, to uh, convert into this that's uh, java programs to machine language yeah compile it and if you'd like to run the test cases is test phase i would like to package that uh, that is a uh, source code as artifact then package it and uh, packaged files if you'd like to upload to the local repository then we can use it to install it yes uh, on the build server that means on the same um, the build machine if you'd like to distribute about current project related artifacts to other uh, projects or other modules then we can upload the current project artifact to the local repository but how do we install artifacts to the local repositories install phase but how do we install the artifacts to the remote repository remote repository is about a private repository within that uh, organization network as the client and the client specific projects and project specific artifacts to store it we use it uh, private repository we can call it in our maven terminology remote repository but once remote repository is up and running and uh, the maven has been integrated with that and if you'd like to uh, upload artifacts to that the remote repository how do we do that that is deploy but deploy we didn't see this the practically we'll come back yeah, but um, yeah, the valid by default anyway that is uh, running that the each and every phase, and we are observing compile, test, package, and verify also. We didn't look into that. We'll come back. This is the integration test cases execution, and install yesterday which we are observing local repository, and this is the deploy which is a pending site is not required for us. This is for the documentation of the APIs uh, to generate it, which is helping that is used by the development team. Yeah, that was some important overall commands we are understanding from the Maven. And um, yeah, this like uh, dependencies is very, very important. So application, if you are creating artifact is nothing but before creating about our application artifact, about our application is having the so many dependencies. If all those dependencies are properly available are loaded during the build, then about our project build, which will get succeeded and the artifacts which will be generated but how to manage it the dependencies yeah the maven is managing that all the dependencies in the local repository yeah whenever we run the build first time it search for that the dependencies in the local system if it is not available then it verifies in the central repository central repository is from the maven community but central repository we can uh, download it uh, uh any artifacts which are available in the central repository uh, as a dependency for about our project we can use it the dependency tag in the pom.xml file and we can get those artifacts to the local repository but we cannot upload it upload we don't have but local repository yes all the downloaded dependencies that will be stored by default in the local repository in the um, the user home directory dot m2 repository folder uh, but this uh, i mean uh, um, the local repository we can customize it that is in the settings.xml file we can define it that yeah i'll show you this uh, settings.xml file later uh, in some of the configuration during the maven integration time with the nexus we need to use it to the settings.xml file so we'll come back to that yeah but how do we install current project artifacts to the local repositories maven install to install artifacts of the project to the local repositories yeah, the local and the central 
and we can have this remote repository that's about our private uh, repository uh, by using the nexus or the jfrog which we can have it and here we can download it from the remote repository also the dependencies we can store it here and uh, during that project's uh, execution time project or build requirement point of view uh, the we can uh, download it from the local i mean remote repository also but what all the form.xml file should contain is uh, which dependency that is required with the group id artifact id version number we need to define it and this nexus and jfrog repository url also required to define it that is the downloading point of view the dependencies and at the same time uh, we can uh, store or we can install about our artifacts to the remote uh, repository there is nexus of the jfrog but how do we install about our artifacts to the remote repository is so the same like uh, uploading time the form.xml file um, the which we need to define the distribution management so we need to integrate with this distribution management element the maven with the nexus of the jfrog then we can go for uh, uploading the artifacts to the remote repository but how do you do that this one this activity the which we have the pending for the demonstration the which will come back to that yeah, that's about uh, the understanding this from the build server some important uh, commands and understanding about the dependencies importance and uh, for pro for about our project what are the dependencies that is required is the how do we manage it so some common libraries we can get it from the maven and some specific libraries of the, the project internal which we can use at the private repositories internally but all these finally storing in the local repository yeah, repositories understanding and uh, life cycles of the Maven understanding. This is the overall main, I mean, important concept from the Maven side. That is a build server. Are you clear on these points? The any queries, questions? So before moving to the next deployment server, but we'll come back to that. This is Nexus and JFrog later. Uh, Nexus we are going to use it. But before that, the, let's talk at the deployment server. That is a Tomcat we are going to use it. Yes, before starting that, any queries, questions from the, the so far sections? Yeah. So if you just understand about our lifecycle process, yeah, the source code, yeah, we were using the Maven to generate a project that is J2SC kind of the project so far. And how do we compile it and how do we run the test cases? How do we package it? That is a package and packaged one. How do we install to the local repository that is installed? These are all some phases which are understanding from the Maven between the source code to that packaging. But next point is deployment is also important. So how do we deploy that application to the servers? Uh, especially JT based applications, if we just observe that, is which we have that web based application or transaction based application or JMS or enterprise edition of applications. Uh, we cannot directly run it on the JVM. So we need to use it servers as a deployment servers yeah so which is uh, i mean what are the different types of the servers that are available in the market the difference i mean that uh, difference between the servers we'll try to understand i mean uh, uh, maybe if you remember about it during the the ways act ways learning activities and um, cloud uh, sorry uh, yeah the aws cloud winner we are learning we were using hdpd service right yeah, even in WordPress application also, you are using that, the Apache service for the PHP-based application. Yeah, that is PHP-based application. How do you do that, the deployment? That is Apache service, which you are using. Or if you have the static-based content of application, if you'd like to deploy it, and we can use it, Apache service. Or S3 bucket itself, we can use it as a static website hosting. Yeah, the application hosting using Apache service, which we had at some points. 
But Java JT based application, can we run it on Apache service? No, so that doesn't support it. We cannot use it, uh, the HTTP service to host about our application. So what we need to uh, have it is, yes, we need to use it, some Java supported servers in the market. But what are the like uh, different types of the servers? What is the difference between Apache in which context we use it? And why do we are going to learn it the Tomcat once again, one more server? So first let's try to understand that the servers, what are the different uh, deployment servers are available in the market? And which one is recommended in which context? Yes, if you try to understand this uh, overall servers the two host about our applications, the types of servers we can set two types of the servers. Types of the servers to host about our applications, we can set two types. One is web servers, we'll call it, and second one is app servers, we'll call it. The web server or web servers are app servers but what is that web server in which context we use the web server it did all dependency on the application as we are understanding application we have the different types right on the base of the customer requirement so if it is the um, internet based application we can use a j2sc but internet based application we need to use the j2ee or a transaction based application or messaging system based application on the base of the client project functionality requirement based the developers they implement the code this code finally to run it and to serve that these functionalities we need to use the servers yeah the servers if you are going to choosing is nothing but that is depending on the application framework which is getting implemented by the development team but in which context web servers we use it and in which context we use the app servers so web servers will be used for static content type of application static content what is the static content suppose um, uh, we have this the college related brochures or some hotel related um, the application and which is having the, the menu items but don't think it like online order and all the things just like they have uh, displayed this what are the menu items which are available that's uh, just information but we cannot do that any transaction on that application or like that college brochure information or if you just take it like uh, suppose residentiantechnologies.com we don't have those any videos and all that Yeah, menu display, yes. The display that's on the, um, the hotels, yes. Or if you just talk it, just, I mean, content, um, the static content which is available, where we don't have any login, login, login and logout option. But if you need some information, you can browse it. Or you can download some PDF files of that, uh, uh, the brochures or menu items of it. So those kind of applications, uh, the way that user is not having that any login and logout option but that application yes uh, he would like to or he needs some information he can browse it so static content the content is not going to change it on the base of the client all the clients the same content but residentiantechnologies.com or uh, gmail.com or this kind of application if you just talk it so the user has to log in and on the base of the login uh, the about uh, my gmail content is different and about your gmail email content is different right yeah the content is going to change it on the base of the user login session login and logout option any transactions you are performing the login and logout durations yeah, static content of application to host it which we can use it web server and not only that the one more activity proxy kind of activities also 
the proxy or routing <coughs> routing of the request from the front end layer to the, the back end layers if you like to use it also we can use the web servers like if you remember about it uh, in the high available architecture we are understanding the load balancer load balancer to that uh, <coughs> proxy layer proxy layer to the back end databases But if you need that like a uh, routing option what is the type of the service which we use it at uh, it is also kind of the load balancer yes it is supporting about it load balancing option and as well as before routing to the, the back end of particular servers yes it is um, uh, going to work like as a load balancing also load balancing and uh, failovers to handle that yes these web servers we can use it it's just like a routing receive the request and forward to the back end some of the server yeah these two kind of the requirement point of view we use the web servers so we have the, some examples later on this proxy how do we use it web servers but uh whenever you are learning that os operating system or whenever we are learning that yes the cloud we were using that hdpd service so examples of these are servers if you just talk it for the web servers httpd this is from who is a vendor Apache, right? The Apache HDPD server we are using. How do we install it? How do we start it? How do we stop it? And how do you host that application? What is the hosting directory for the HDPD service? Yes, this is the deployment directory. So how do we install it? How do we start it? Or how do we enable it? and uh, if you have those any html files how do you host it that even the wordpress application also once that uh, tarball has been downloaded you are extracting to the where to be able html itself right to access the wordpress application yeah so this is a deployment directory the for that apache HTTPD, and we have one more server in the market the nginx 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 server this is also one more web server and HA proxy so mostly which will be used as a proxy services but most of the time content applications is we use it Apache HTTPD but proxy are the routing options we see this in the market nginx or the HA proxy services yeah, there are the different servers which are available in the market the which are helping as a uh, the web servers either to host to static content of application or we can use it to these servers as a proxy or the routing but the actual business transaction based application like a dynamic content based application if you like to host it we need to use the app servers dynamic content so like user to user the content is going to change it yeah, most of the application which we see the dynamic content right static content these days anyone is coming up with that application yes he is i mean uh, they are coming up with that like uh, uh, mobile based integration notifications email based integration notifications and some dynamic content are providing that these days do you see that any hotel uh, the application which is having only the menu options no right they are giving that to take away uh, the kind of the so services and online you can find it and you can book it and you can uh, get it to the home itself but that is dynamic content it is not just like a, you need to i mean uh, you need to log into that application and what are like uh, uh, the items that is required you need to choose it add to cart and pay that then you will get it to the home delivery yes tar ball whatever i talk it that is a tar file simple yes Yeah, app servers um, that support supported to dynamic content and uh, uh, yes it is supporting the, the transaction based application if you have those uh, transactions like a login and logout and uh, we need to perform this the transaction on the base of that user account or user session we need to go for the app servers web servers doesn't support it our messaging application 
the messaging based like email integrations or uh, uh, sending that messages to the mobile that is sms messages yes if you're expecting that then normal web servers they don't support it all those functionality we need to go for that app servers which are available in the market so as simple as it is most of that here if you see java jt based application all these kind of applications if you are going to talk it Uh, we cannot run it simply on the jvm we need to use it or we need to take the help of the servers so what are the different servers are supporting that in the market for the java jt based application is that is a tomcat weblogic vsphere jboss there are the different servers which are available in the market from the different providers yeah the tomcat is from apache team See Apache team, they have that the web server. Apache team, they have that the app server. Apache team, they have that the build tool, like um, Ant, Maven, and they have those like monitoring tools. So so many tools, so many products from the Apache team. Yeah, one of the uh, server that is a Tomcat. And this is uh, from Apache team, and WebLogic. This is from the Oracle team. JBoss, this is from the Red Hat, and Westphere, this is from IBM. So all these servers are supporting for the Java JT based application. Java or JT based application, if you'd like to deploy it, we need to use it one of the server. If you are expecting this kind of uh, the transaction from that application, either dynamic content or backend transaction interacting with the databases and messaging systems. Yes, we need to take the help of the web server. We cannot run the application functionality is implementing by development team. But once application has been implemented, application is uh, uh, that is a simple one static component. It doesn't know how to respond to the users. Then once application is ready, that application will host on the server. Then the server is receiving that request and it is identifying that which type of request is that. Then on the base of the request, it is executing the developer's code. Our application program yeah application implementation is one point but implemented application how do we serve to that end user is we need to take the help of the servers so java jt based application this is one and if you talk it like a .NET based application we have that ias server ias is another server for a .NET or c sharp based application and a php based application you can use it apache itself the wordpress application if you just talk it yes the apache itself you can use it as a to host it php based application and uh, yeah the python also that's like uh, internal is going to use that apache itself yeah there are like a different uh, the servers which are available on the base of the type of application So already we know about it Apache HTTPD that is from that uh, web servers. Now we are going to talk it about it one of the app server. So how do you host that application that is dynamic content of application. So that is web based applications. How do you host it on the Tomcat? We will talk it about it. So are you clear on this uh, difference between the web server and app server? The types of servers which are available in the market. So on the base of the application content and technology, is it a .NET or PHP or the Python or Go language or uh, suppose if you are using like Node.js, Node.js NPM server which we need to use it. There is NPM build tool and uh, we have the server for it. Yeah, but main servers if you just talk it like Apache which we see this mostly, um, that is web servers point of HTTPD or Nginx. And another important server which we talk it like most of the cases that is a Tomcat. But some of the clients is they use it web like or JBoss or VAS. So there are the different servers, but most of that in the Java JT environment, more than 50% of the applications which are running on the Tomcat. Yeah, so we are going to talk it about it. The Tomcat app server. So who is a vendor of this one? 
Apache provider. See, this is the third tool we are talking from the Apache. The Maven, the before one, whatever we had it, that is from Apache. Tomcat is from Apache. And before HTTPD service, which are running on the ways are the cloud. Yes, that is from Apache. And Tomcat is also has been implemented using Java programming. So that means Tomcat is running on the JVM. We need to install the JVM first before going to run the Tomcat. So Maven before going to install it, Maven is running on the JVM, right? It has to be installed the JVM. The same thing Tomcat also has been implemented to provide all these functionalities that is dynamic content, transaction handling, messaging, they're all the functionality which they have implemented by the Apache team in this Tomcat server. That we can host about our application and we can bring that for about our application, these kind of the features. But how they have implemented the Tomcat server by the Apache team? They have implemented using the Java itself. As we are talking about the J2SC they have used here. Thread programming, socket based programming, the transactions, how do we handle it? All that they have implemented on this Tomcat. Now we can use it with this Tomcat to host about our application. Even the weblike also has been implemented using Java. JBoss, VAS, they're all running on the JVM. But to provide the functionality of these are these functionality. Yeah, Tomcat is also implemented by using the Java and it should be run it on the JVM. That means internally you are using about it to post about our uh, the functionality of application. Internally, we are using JVM. JVM on the top of the server, on the top of the server, we deploy about our application. That is a layer system. The OS layer on the OS JVM on the JVM server on the server we deploy about our application to handle all the requests and responses. Yeah, the Tomcat app server uh, that is from the Apache and which has been implemented. This is also using the Java and uh, uh, the any prerequisites. If you just talk it, we don't have the much to discuss on the prerequisites. So if you just refer that our uh, Tomcat uh, documentation, so let's go to this. The Maven, how we have the same way, simple server. But market share, if you just uh, try to find it on the app servers of the Java, Tomcat is a market leading. Suppose, uh, yeah, Tomcat download or a Tomcat server, if you go to the documentation, and this official site tomcat.apache.org yeah apache tomcat and a home page if you go to that here you can see so the latest version 9.063 oh sorry 10.0 they have come up with that <coughs> yeah so apache tomcat and we don't have the much things to discuss on it but let's go for that how do you download it and how do you use it yeah, which version and what are the prerequisites if you'd like to understand it as the these are also a, as a J, java specification we have that so you see that the tomcat version suppose java as we have the the, the five six seven eight eleven they're all like uh, the jdk versions jdk as the jdk versions and as well as the internal jsp layers servlet layers enterprise uh, i mean business logic like uh, ejb layer so as all these versions point of view authentication mechanisms so tomcat has come up with these versions you see that different versions so the 11 of the jdk or if you're using the 10.1 version of the tomcat then you need to use the 11 version of the jdk or as a eight versions of the JDK, there are the two version 10.0 and 9.0. And the seven version of the JDK, we can use it 8.x. And especially these are servlet, JSPs, business logic, web sockets, authentication. These versions, application team, what are the different versions they are using? On the base of these version specification, also like a business content to implement it, they need to use it. Uh, the like uh, the Hibernate we have, the Spring Boot application we have. EJBs we have 
there are the different APIs that on the base of the API specification of the development team, we need to find that the uh, the lower level that is a Java and as that Java point of view, the version of the Tomcat. Yeah, as a latest version, which is available that the 10 and uh, the prerequisites, if you observe that we don't have any the specification of it, like uh, how much memory is required or how much CPU is required. Uh, but the JDK makes sure about it as this version point of view, the JDK is that's required. Other than that, uh, there are no other specification. And how do you download it and how do we install the Tomcat is? Yes, here you can see that binary distributions and the source code distribution. Even that Maven is also having that the binary and the source code, right? Source code that is for complete code of this Tomcat. You can download it and you can uh, customize it the Tomcat server. This is open source. But source code that is for the development team. Source code we don't use it. But if you'd like to install the Tomcat or if you'd like to run it, we need the artifact that is a binary file. So packaged file. Packaged file that's we can call it like as a binary file. And we have the GIF file or a tar, tar file. A tar ball will also we'll, tar ball will say normally the tar file. So which one is required you can download it and you can use it on the base of the windows 32 windows 64 and if you need that full documentation of this tomcat you can download this file our only deployer but we don't need that core file system of the tomcat only deployment then you can use it the embedded the different but yes let's go for that the complete uh, functionality of the server that is tomcat dot tar dot gz file like how we are doing the maven the same thing Download this tar ball. First, make sure the Java is installed. Then download this tar ball, extract it, and rename it whatever you name, whatever the name you prefer it, and use it that how we are using the Maven the same way Tomcat. Yeah, so this is some documentation you can refer it, and if you'd like to know this, you know, the Maven plugins to integrate with the Tomcat it has been given. That's we'll come back later. Let's go for. Let's go to the server to install the Tomcat and to set up the Tomcat. Are you clear this point so far? Yeah, I'm going to use the same system, whatever it was used for Maven. Um, the same system, let me take it. To install that Tomcat or to run the Tomcat server. yeah so already on this system if you just observe that the java is installed we don't need to install once again this one more jdk the java is already available the way we are using 1.8 whatever the version doesn't matter that but on the base of this version 
which we can go for this install in the Tomcat. We install the 10.0, which we can run it on the 1.8 version or 9.x version, which we can use it uh, on the JDK. But if you are using 10.1.x something, then we need to have the JDK 11. So let me browse it that. Yeah, the 10 point uh, the zero. So this is the latest uh, uh, the switch is showing that as a distribution. So let me copy the link to download the star bar. And let's go back to the server. And I'm going to use it here also opt folder. Already where we were doing that the Maven project. This is about a Maven project which are observing yesterday, and this is the Maven home directory where we have installed the Maven related libraries and binaries. The same thing now, Tomcat related libraries and binaries, we are going to install it by downloading this file. Yeah, Tarball has been downloaded. This is Apache Tomcat. Uh, let's extract this. Same, how we are doing the, the Maven the same approach. Yes, it has been extracted. There's a Tomcat, uh, the I mean, it contains the Tomcat related libraries and binaries. And this file is no more required. Let me remove this. Yes, this is the extracted active of the Tomcat. Uh, let me rename this one as App Server. I would like to yes call this as I would like to rename as a app server. Yeah, this is about our Tomcat server home directory. And if you go to this directory, here we can see the all the libraries and bandits of the Tomcat. <coughs> And here we can see the bin folder, which contain the binaries, that means executable files. So what are the executable files we are expecting? So startup.sh, shutdown.sh, starting the server, shutting down the server, those scripts we can find it. And configuration file of the Tomcat, libraries of the Tomcat, libraries mostly that we don't touch it explicitly, these are all the supported files. But if you'd like to start it and stop it, binaries we use it. And if you'd like to configure that the server properties, we use the conf configuration files, library supported files, and logs of the server. Yes, if the server is up and running and it is doing the transaction, all the transactions information, whether the transaction is successful or whether the transaction is a failed, we which we need to trace it. But how do you trace it that the transactions of the servers? Yeah, the logs files are very, very important for us to troubleshoot it or to analyze it, the problems which are happening within the server. So the logs which we should know. And we have this temporary and work directories. So these are all contains like um, cache of the Tomcat server, temporary files of the Tomcat server. That's, I mean, that is a, uh, internally managing by the Tomcat, temporary files, cache files. And important one more directory that is web apps. Whatever this web apps is. So this is the deployment directory of the Tomcat. So once where file is available, our jar file is available, our ER file is available, our RAR file is available. They're all the like type of application, right? as java but where do we deploy it on the tomcat how do we deploy it to the tomcat server yeah copy that var file to this web apps folder this is about our deployment directory for the tomcat server what is the deployment directory for the apache var triple w html how we are using so if you are using the tomcat the how to deploy that application to the tomcat server is that is Tomcat home directory, wherever the Tomcat is installed, and go to the web apps folder and copy that application. This is the deployment of application. You will come back anyway, all these directories one by one to understand it. But let me quickly list it. So once Tomcat is installed, what do we call the directory is? 
normally we refer as a Catalina home directory. Now where we have installed the Catalina, Catalina is uh, kind of I mean, the server name. But normally we say that Tomcat home directory. But in the internal, um, the server point of view, server any, at any time, if you observe the, some properties of the server, we see that Catalina. Catalina is nothing but that is Tomcat itself. We can call it like a Tomcat wherever it, in, is, wherever it is installed. That installation location, we call it as a Catalina home directory. Where we have installed Catalina, this is about our directory, home directory of the Tomcat server. But what are the important files and folders we have is one thing which are I'm shining bin. Sorry. But what are the important files we have in the bin folder is I'll just list it, but we are going to use it all these one by one. But just uh, to quickly understand some file system of the Tomcat startup.sh, this is one script to file, shutdown sh this is another binary file which we'll use it and another one is version dot sh so there are the three important uh, the binary files in that tomcat home directory bin folder start dot sh that is to start the tomcat server shutdown dot sh to shut down the server and version of the tomcat how do you know this is the which we can run it version dot sh yeah there are all three important binary files and next we have this the con folder but within the con folder what are the important files so let me list it here but we'll come back later to understand what about these files that is server.xml file is one file and another important configuration file tomcat users.xml file so the two important configuration files of the tomcat which we should know one is server.xml and second one is tomcat users.xml file if you would like to change the port of the tomcat or if you would like to add the users to the tomcat then what is the configuration files we'll use it is these two next one is the logs so what are the important log files of the tomcat server one is access log and second one is catalina dot catalina dot out file so this is one more important server log file so access log file catalina dot out file the, all the transactions of the tomcat server where it is going to writing this is that is a catalina dot out but who from which systems the requests are have been received to the tomcat and at what time the requests have been received that means access information of the server so who is accessed who is in the sense ip address from which IP addresses the request have been received to the Tomcat. That is going to writing in the access log file. All the requests which are coming to the server, the server is going to write that from which IP address the request is received. That is an access log. Yeah, there are the two important log files of the Tomcat. Binaries. In the libraries, normally we don't need to uh, explicitly discuss. We don't have any specification. But lib is a supported uh, yeah, how we have the dependency, how we are talking to the dependency for about our uh, project uh, build point of view. The Maven, I mean, sorry, Tomcat you are running is nothing but internal Tomcat is going to use it to the libraries, supported files. All the supported files of this, um, the startup scripts, shutdown scripts are available in this lib folder. Yeah, binaries, libraries, configuration files, logs folder and another important directory that is web apps so this is the deployment directory if you have any application once packaging is done the var file or the jar file or the er file we deploy or we yeah, host on the tomcat server but where do we have this deployment directory is web apps web apps is the deployment directory of the tomcat like how we have the var html for web server And a temporary and work directory, as we have this uh, two more directories, temp or work. These are all cache system. It is going to use it. Sometimes the servers. Um, suppose if I deploy the var file, but the var file has to be extracted, right? 
dot var is a packaged file which contains all the resources of the Ruffin. But those, uh, I mean, the packed file, how it is going to extract it is, it is going to use the temporary directory. And once application has been loaded, that application related cache, it is going to use it in the work directory. These are all the supported directories to run or to extract that applications, which are posted on the Tomcat. Yeah, this is about the file system of the Tomcat. The binaries, libraries, configuration files, logs files, deployment directory, and cache file system of the Tomcat. Yeah, now let's talk it one by one. Yes, how do we use it? The scripts to start the server, and then uh, how do we access it? And how do we do the, the deployment during the deployment? Some configurations, how do you do that? And how do you watch the transactions of the Tomcat? Yes, the one by one, let's understand it. Are you clear on this point? The file system of the Tomcat once it has been installed. Yeah, whatever I am talking about it, that is in the app server bin folder. If you observe this in the bin folder, there are so many files, but don't worry about it, all the things. And main thing, main scripts, startup.sh, shutdown.sh, and version.sh. But a startup and shutdown itself, we see that startup.sh file is available and startup.batch file is available. And shutdown.batch file is available, sh file is available. They are all the platform. On the base of the platform based, we can use it to these scripts. Suppose if you are using the Linux, we use the sh file. But if you are using the Tomcat on the Windows system, then we will use it shutting down the server about this batch file or starting about the server using this batch file. They have given that two files, Windows platform supported files in the same binaries. They didn't give the, the separate uh, uh, the distributions. So you can download that uh, like a GIF file and you can use the GIF file on the Unix also, which contains all the uh, binaries and libraries to support it, Unix and as well as Windows. In the same file they have given. That's why we see so many files. But uh, yes, important, these are three. And like that, if you just observe that uh, con folder, yes, important configuration Tomcat users.xml file and server.xml file. And web apps folder. If you just observe that web apps, already we have some application which have been deployed here. You see this docs, examples, root, manager, that means some applications they have given some default applications and which are hosted on the Tomcat server. But what about these applications? We'll talk it later. But how do we deploy about our custom applications? About our application, how do we deploy it? Yeah, now let's go for uh, first starting the server and shutting down the server. How do we do that and how do you evaluate it? Then we'll come back. Configuration files and uh, deployment options now how to start it and stop the server is go to the tomcat server home directory and bin folder and use it first let me show that version.sh how do you know that version of the tomcat which version of the tomcat uh, we have installed is yes in the bin folder we can run it version.sh file and it is saying about it catalina yes you see that like they are not calling about the tomcat so internal they are referring this the server name as a Catalina. Yeah, Catalina home where it is installed, the base directory or home directory, and a temporary directory of the Tomcat server, the where all the files that here have been extracted, and JRE, yes, it is using that, the JRE from here, and this is the class path. And what is the version of this Tomcat which I have installed is Apache Tomcat 10.0.21. And this server has been released in the May 10, 2022. And this is the server version number. They are using that four digits. You see that 10 is a major release, 0 is a minor release, 21 is a patch number. And bugs point of view also, they are managing that internal server numbers. But external, they are giving that three version, three octet number. But internal, they are managing about four octets during the release process any 
the minor changes or patches information or bug fixes to track it they are using internal four digit version number for this tomcat but externally to the users they are giving the 10 0 I mean three octet notation and this is the way is information yes this tomcat finally i mean if you just observe that this tomcat is running on this jvm this is a jvm version 1.8.0 red hat but this jvm is running on this linux the linux operating system which is on the kernel 5.10 and architecture is amd64 yeah that's about version information of the tomcat which we can get it by running version.sh let's go for this how to start the tomcat so that is which we can use it in the bin folder tomcat bin startup.sh is available so let me trigger this command yes it is using internal some arguments as environment variables and finally it is saying about it tomcat has been started but how do you know that the tomcat has been started and it is up and running or not suppose you have started yesterday but how do you know that tomcat is running it or not and how do you access the tomcat uh, url suppose once hdpd is um, uh, installed and we use the system ctl start hdpd or status hdpd to verify that the status of the hdpd that is running it or not and then we use the url right so take that ip address of the system and what is the port of the HDPD, yes, 8.0. But what is the port of the Tomcat server? Yes, that is 8.0.8.0. Yes, we can use it like how we are asking about the Apache the same way, HDPD, the 8.0.8.0 port, which we can use it and we can access that. Okay, fine, good. Um, that has been started, but how do you know that? Says we can do that in three ways verifying about the Tomcat is running it or not. So, on the server itself, how do we verify it is ps hyphen process wise, we can check it ps hyphen ef grep Tomcat search for the Tomcat process. Yes, if you see this message, yeah, this is the process information the Tomcat process. Yeah, the tomcat is up and running yeah which user has started ect user this is the process id of this tomcat and um, yes what is the command panel it is executing is user bin java and start yes this is a java program internally tomcat you are running is nothing but tomcat java program is executing but there are all the arguments which have been passed to start the tomcat So there are all the arguments which are passed to this Java program. And finally, what is the argument it is given that is start. But where is this home directory? Yes, you see that Catalina base. Where is this Tomcat is running? Opt app server. Can we install the multiple Tomcat servers on the same machine? Can we run it? Two or more Tomcat servers? Yeah, we can do that two or more Tomcat servers, we can run it at the same time on the same system. If the system resources are supporting, that is a RAM and CPU are supporting, we can run it on the same machine, two or more Tomcat servers. But how do you do that? That will come back. But for the timing is this Tomcat, what are the process which is running? It is installed at this location. This is the Tomcat home directory. If you see this process information, this process is up and running. That's Tomcat is running. This is one approach. Use that process level verification. Next one is we can verify the port. Netstat iPhone and LTP. This is one more option to verify that the Tomcat is running it or not. You see this. So on the TCP port level, on any IP address. So this 8080 is listening that. And what is the process ID of it? 9268. What is the process ID of this Tomcat? 9268. Yes, 8080 is up and running or listening is nothing but yes, the Tomcat server is up and running. But don't think that the Tomcat only 8080, but suppose um, yeah, Tomcat to check it with the default port is 8080, but maybe it can be customized the custom ports. But best thing is PSI, you have to grab Tomcat, the process information to know that. 
especially for the Tomcat. Maybe Jenkins is running. Jenkins is also uses that 8080. JBoss is running. JBoss also uses the same port, 8080 default port. Because the Jenkins, sorry, yeah, Jenkins or JBoss, if you just talk it, JBoss has been built it internally by using the Tomcat. JBoss you are running is nothing but internally Tomcat you are using that. Yeah, the JBoss, Tomcat, Jenkins, they're all like a default port 8080. But 8080 port is listening it or not as a Tomcat point of view is this way we can check it by using netstat NLTP. But not only one port, if you see the same process ID 9268, it is using one more port also. What is the port? 8005. So Tomcat is using the two ports. One is 8080. This is for HTTP connector. Through the browser, if you'd like to access this Tomcat, we can use it 8080. But internal one more port 8005. This is for shutdown. So whenever we shut down the service, this port is going to invoking and it is going to start the i mean it is going to stop the service so shutdown purpose it is going to manage it internal one port but this is we don't use it explicitly this is only machine scope if you just observe that uh, on the loopback adapter it is going to running that that is a local host but you cannot use it outside only internal but this one is yes you can access outside as well as on any ip address you can access it Yeah, this approach verifying about it the tomcat is running or not that is an extra nltp the first is process level second one is uh, port level verification and third level is let's go to that accessing this one through the browser so on which machine is running that machine ip address take it yeah we have installed the tomcat on this node let's take it this public ip and let's go to the browser http connector port is 8080 this port which we can use that yeah now we are hitting but we are not getting that home page so what could be the reason of it the way we are not able to access it yeah that is a yes security group is not enabled let's go to that security group so let's access the security group of this situation and inbound rules if you verify that that inbound rules have been enabled only for the 22 port let's edit this and add the rule on the custom tcp port that is 8080 we are allowing from any ip address let's save the rule and let's go back and check it now the tomcat home page is displaying it or not now we see the says yes, the home page we got it if you got this page then the tomcat is up and running so this one is the default root application we are observing some default application in the web apps folder right yes they have given the some sample application so this is a sample application which is helping whether tomcat is running it or not if you just hit that with that ip address port number you we can get it the tomcat home page if you see this page so you are seeing this page is nothing but you have successfully installed the tomcat congrats yeah that is about tomcat starting and verifying three approaches we can do process level we can check it port level we can uh, verify it and finally through url based also which we can verify it that's about starting the server and verifying the server but let's go for now shutting down the server and we'll re-verify this one second how do we shut down the server is so in that same tomcat home directory bin folder now we are in this catalina home bin folder and use it shutdown.sh and which helps about it to shut down the server now if you verify the ps-f grab tomcat you see this no process up and run the process is down and if you verify this netstat command so you see the say 0, 8, 0, any port is listening the only 22 is listening and 25 is listening 25 is for that smtp 22 is for ssh 
only there are two main ports which are run but we don't see the 8080 ports which are present and if you go back to the browser and if you refresh it then page cannot be found because the backend service is not available yeah that's about starting and starting and verifying about uh, version of the tomcat those are three binaries using that are you clear on this point the starting stopping and verifying that version of the tomcat server and how to check if the tomcat is running it and listening it or not yeah but the point is the whenever we are plan whenever we are working with the starting the server shutting the server we need to go to the, the particular uh, the user home directory I mean, that is tomcat home directory and a bin folder we need to use it those two scripts right the startup.rsh and shutdown.rsh but i would like to go to the uh, some other directory now i'm in that user home directory can i invoke that start script and stop scripts from here or any from any directory on the system for this user no now as this point of view we cannot do that you need to give that complete absolute path of the the scripts we need to specify it but during starting stopping going to the particular directory and invoking those uh, scripts we don't want that but how do we invoke start script or shutdown script from any directory or any location from the system so what do we need to do maven also we are doing the same thing right mn by default it is not available we were running this from the go to the man home directory bin folder and use it mn binary but later what we are doing we were adding to the path variable yes here also take this maven home directory bin folder and add to the path variable so if you go back to that the previous directory okay let me go for the server or tomcat home directory opt s app server and let me go to the bin folder also but here if you see there's a bin folder we have so many files we have some boot a boot supporting point of which jar files are available batch files are available sh files are available suppose if i load it to this entire binaries bin folder to the path variable it is loading all the files right but mn home directory if you just observe that mn maven3 and bin folder maven is not having too many binaries and stuff like only four or five files and enter maven bin folder we were adding to the path variable the shell is loading all these files and we are able to run it mn command mainly we are using mn only okay so that is uh, if you just observe that in the dollar path adding about maven binaries that's fine because this is having only four or five files and it is loading about the shell right path if in the path any directory if you define it that directory related all the files that is loading in the shell and whenever we run the command shell is going to searching that all the files in this directory in this directory in this directory in this directory suppose if you load it more binaries to the shell then performance of the, the commands execution on the system is going to have the impact because here if you see this if you load it entire uh, the tomcat home directory bin folder we have the so many jar files so many shell script files but we don't need all the things we need it only this script and we need it only another script to this script these two files only we would like to add to the path variable we don't want to add it all the things getting the points of it so it is not recommended directly taking about your tomcat home directory bin folder and adding to the path variable we can do it yes we can do it but that is not optimized one system performance which will be degraded whenever we are running commands if i am running any command is nothing but this command 
is going to set by the, the shell within that path environment variable. What are the directories we have defined? So command execution, it is going to take the time. That is latency issues we'll be having. So what is the recommended approach is? Only add it to startup.sh and shutdown.sh those two scripts to the path variable. Then you can invoke those scripts from any location. Why do you want to invoke that entire binaries, all the binaries? So what is the solution this kind of the stuff is? Suppose in the path, if you just check it, already, yes, Maven binaries are available, user local bin is available in the path, and user local uh, system binaries, user binaries. So we have already directories have been added in the path variable. That means if I copy these startup.sh and shutdown.sh to any one of the directory, then automatically these two files also which will be added to the path, right? We don't want to add it entire bin folder of the Tomcat. That is not at all recommended. You can do it. You can achieve it what you want, but that is not optimized one. <coughs> but the point is already these directories we have why don't we add it about our startup.sh or shutdown.sh or why don't we copy those files to this directory then automatically this directory is available in the path then these two files also which will be added so how do you do that is so create a soft link of this startup.sh and shutdown.sh to these directories because if you copy it startup.sh and shutdown.sh directly to this directory then we will be having the reference so because uh, i mean whenever we are starting the server it has to load that all the libraries it has to load that all the applications but all the applications and everything are available in the tomcat home directory but if you copy these two files to that user local bin uh, the start script and shutdown script doesn't work it because supported libraries are not found so we need to just give actually the file should be here itself but we need to have that reference in the user local bin that is a soft link which we need to or which we can use it as a best solution over here are you getting the points of it how to create a soft link Yeah, so what do we do this is the startup.sh and shutdown.sh these two scripts we will add to that user local bin but do we have any files already in the user local bin let me check it so we don't have any files but now about our scripts we are adding that this is about user specific local binaries <clears throat> so how to create the soft link is ln hyphen yes this is the command right and a source file to the destination directory it is like i said uh, I mean how we have the, the shortcut in our Windows system the same way the main file is located somewhere D drive or something But we are just copying to the desktop creating the shortcut to the desktop Now if I just double click on the desktop, but background it is going to use the D drive file itself, right? Yeah, the file actually it is located in the Tomcat home directory bin folder itself But we are just creating the soft link for it in the user local bin yeah, let's say specify that complete path um, the which file that should be source file in the opt app server in the bin folder startup.sh so this is the script i would like to map it this directory why i'm taking this directory only is this directory is already available in the path variable so again i don't need to touch it about the path variable i'm just using this directory that's all so i'm adding about it this is startup.sh to this variable with the command i would like to give as a start server so if i invoke the start server then background it is going to call this a startup.sh which is located in this location are you getting the points on this <clears throat> yeah, let me use that sudo yeah the soft link has been created for startup.sh now if you verify in the user local bin Use a local bin, yes. So this is the startup.sh actually located, and we are calling this one as a start server. Like that, <clears throat> stop the server. Let me define it. So sudo ln s which file 
the source file is apt app server in the bin folder shutdown.sh this one we would like to use it in um, user local bin as a stop server you can give the same file name or you can give any command and now if you verify that's in the user local bin we have the two files reference startup.sh shutdown.sh and we are calling as a start server stop server suppose now if i go to that some user home directory now i'm in that i'm not in that like a tomcat home directory bin folder and if i use it start server as tomcat server has been started and if you go back to the browser and if you refresh it Yes, that is up and running. And if I just use that stop server from any, I mean, on that system, from any directory, we can invoke that command because that's a startup and shutdown. Those scripts we are referring as a start server and a stop server. If I use a stop server command on the system, then it is a stopping the Tomcat server. Yeah, that's about how to start it and stop it. Uh, yeah, the scripts are available, but instead of using the scripts, add these scripts to that with the soft link to the user local bin. That is user level. The custom binaries we can manage it. That is a, a recommended directory. And what are the commands you would like to use it to start the server, stop the server? Define with that command about the soft links. Are you clear on this point? The starting and stopping the server. with the soft link approach yeah that is advantage of these soft links how do we why do we use it the soft links in the real time is yeah if you need that the actual physical location file is required to refer from other location but we don't want to copy copies that is going to manage it here one file and there another file as isolated files but instead of the copying that we can just create a short link the physical file is located actual location, but you can refer from other locations wherever it is required. So instead of loading that entire Tomcat home directory binaries to the path variable, use it this approach. Maven, you can use it. Yes, Maven home directory bin folder, you can load it entirely. There is no issue because that is having only four or five binaries. There is no issue on it. But if you see the Tomcat bin, it is having the jar files, it is having the so many scripts. Why do you want to unnecessarily loading that all these files to that shell path? That is performance issue. Yeah, the next point is, are you clear on this starting stopping? Okay, we stopped the server. Huh? So I can log into this system and I can just uh, use that start server, the command that is helping about it to start the server. That is advantage of this soft links. Okay, good. Uh, the server is ready to use it. But the next thing is how to manage the applications. Suppose I would like to deploy that application or undeploy that application and I would like to see that what all the applications that have been deployed on this Tomcat server or I would like to uninstall that application from the Tomcat server. That is app management, application management. So application management, what is that like one more link which has been given is so manager app is that one more uh, uh, the internal app which is available. We can use this app to access or to manage the application. What did he say in that 403 access denied? So I would like to access this, the manager app application, but it is not allowing for us because we didn't create any users and we didn't, uh, because to manage the application, we need to have the proper authentication, right? Anyone can access what our Tomcat URL and can uh, manage the applications? No. We should have the some authentication, the username and the passwords and the role 
the who can do that what all the activities that's the permissions but by default whenever we uh, uh, install the tomcat it is not giving all that options now we need to have that the username and passwords and even that it is saying that access denied while accessing this uh, url itself so how do you do all these configurations is uh, that's the time is not sufficient i mean it takes like a half an hour to 40 minutes if you start this configuration uh, we start we talk it on monday so monday we'll go for the sun shining about it so how do we use this uh, tomcat console or how to configure this tomcat console with username and passwords and after asking about it how do we the list of all the applications and managing the applications we'll talk it that but now if you just observe that the home page yes it is redacting to the tomcat official page for any reference of this uh, documentation and you can see the documentation is one more sublink uh, but this documents sublink if you just observe that this internal application itself right a tomcat home directory i mean this is a tomcat server and port number docs so this is one of the application which is hosted on the tomcat that application whenever we click on that it is acts in that application docs like that configuration configuration also it is from the docs config and examples is another application you see that they're all like examples which are posted but where all these applications are posted if you just observe that before going to the stop today session opt apps over where the applications are posted on the tomcat yes if you see this in the web apps so what are the docs application we are accessing what are the examples application we are accessing whatever like manager app link that so we are clicking on the manager app link right this is the application we are trying to access and root application what is the root application yeah now if you just see it about that ip address and port number yeah this is the root application if i remove those directories from the web apps folder all these application you cannot access simple so there are but these are all the default applications to manage the tomcat server manager app you are clicking the manager app is nothing but internally what is the application it is accessing manager which is located in the web apps folder but by default that is not given the permissions to access so there's uh, uh, like we need to have the, the proper user that is authentication and authorization but remaining documentation that is docs application which is hosted on this tomcat server or examples of application yes examples you can access it no issues of it but manager app is required with username and passwords and with the proper permissions that's how we configure it we'll talk it on monday uh does app server bot bot required to change the owner permissions uh, yeah does app server not required to change the owner permissions that we did on maven server mm, on the maven server what we have done owner permissions okay okay ch1 that's already done right opt folder we have already done we don't need to do once again opt is already defined with the opt opt folder already defined with the, uh, the ect user each and every time not required to change it yeah we did it like uh, iphone or with right so recursively it is going to manage it for each and every directory not required to perform it but first time if you are using opt because the maven we are doing that the first time and one time one time is enough but each and every time that is not required okay good uh, that's all from my side i mean today so just try to practice Oh, no no we didn't do this on the maven folder we have done opt folder as uh, uh, we are talking about it any third party softwares to use it for that ec2 user we have set up that 
yeah good uh, yeah that's all from my side for today understanding about this what is the difference between the web server and app servers what are the different types of the servers overall yes any server you are talking either that should be web server or app server suppose tomorrow we are talking that is something like uh, uh, nexus server nexus server is also nexus is one of the replication which is running on on the base platform that is on the server you need to have one server to host the nexus or if you are asking the jenkin is nothing but jenkin application is running on backend on one of the server or if you are using so and so record server is nothing but that report server is running backend on one of the server but report application is deployed on that server suppose on the tomcat if i host it the nexus then that server we call it as a nexus server suppose on the tomcat if i host it the gmail application with the gmail smtp functionalities we can call it as a gmail server on the base of the functionality we call that server but basic platform which we have this is suppose uh, about our customer has come up with that something loan application and the loan application is deployed on the web logic server so then we will call it as a loan server as the his application functionality point of view that server with the functionality app server instead of calling that app server is the default server but on the app on the server you are posting about your application that application functionality point of view we call that server if the report report server or if it is uh, the jenkins jenkins server on the base of the functionality 